Hi guys, uh, I'm Scott Shapiro from Europa International. I'm here with um, Mark and Jason Hello. from Hello. Uh, Independent Eyewear Manufacturing. Uh, for those of you who don't know our story, um, we're, we're going to tell you a little bit about it and then we'll, uh, we'll show you a little bit of, uh, of our factory. But we are doing this live from our brand new facility just outside of Chicago. Um, Europa is a, a company that uh, was founded about 40 years ago by uh, uh, my mom and dad, Alan and Cynthia Shapiro. We are an independent, family-owned company, um, and uh, and we sell eyewear. We've done, a, uh, I think, a, a great job and had success uh, importing a lot of our collections, uh, like Scott Harris, Chinzia, Michael Ryan, uh, and we've supported the independent eye care professional now for, like I said, almost 40 years. Um, but it's been our hope for many years to, uh, to do something different and to um, take that to another level, start uh, manufacturing frames in the U.S. And um, we asked about three years ago, we, we started looking for a way to do that as a company. And uh, we asked a lot of people in the industry to potentially partner with us, find a way to do that. And uh, they all told us we were crazy and, and that, that it was impossible. And... I think uh, we at one point thought it was impossible as well, um, but uh, until we met these guys. Um, and uh, so I'm going to introduce you to the guys, and uh, this is uh, Mark uh, Franchi and Jason Stanley, two cousins, two guys who uh, started freeze frames out of Ventura, California, and um, obviously thought enough of this project to move here to Chicago to build this uh, this new factory, which is now officially up and running. So say hi, guys. Hello, hello, hello everybody. So um, be here. so do you guys want to uh, get started by uh, just telling us sort of how you got started with with freeze frames and um, you know your process to eventually making frames in Ventura? Take this, or you want me to start? Sure. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll start it. Well, first off, I like the fact that I wore glasses. Neither one of us knew anything about the optical industry or eyewear manufacturing or really anything in the, in the industry at all. Um, in early 2009, uh, a friend of a friend of Mark's had a uh, small eyewear company, Freeze Frames Eyewear. Uh, had about six styles and probably about the same amount of customers. <laughs> and uh, she approached Mark and uh, myself to run the company for her or you know, help her manage it and really make the brand take off. Um, after looking at it, we didn't necessarily want to do all the uh, legwork for her, but we offered to purchase the company, which we did. Uh, it sat stagnant until about September of 2009, um, about 30 days before Vision Expo West. We figured we should uh, attend the show, then decided that we should exhibit at the show, still not knowing anything about eyewear or the industry. Um, we did. Uh, sold more frames at that show than the prior owner had sold in the three years of the company's existence. So we figured we had something good going. Um, and then from there, we started designing our own frames. Uh, the two of us traveled the, traveled the country. We were our own sales force for the first year and a half. Yeah, so, so talk to us about how you, uh, how you learned to, and, uh, and sort of that process of learning to make frames. Because obviously, like you said, you had no experience in the eyewear industry at all. You didn't know much about frames, certainly not how to make them. Right. So I would say, you know, the 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 seed, um, uh, the, the whole idea was seeded at that first show. Um, again, not coming from the industry, we didn't uh, we didn't understand why why no product was being made uh, in the U.S. And um, certainly, quickly we figured out that uh, uh, the two main things in in eyewear production, high-end eyewear production anyway, uh, or uh, eyewear brands is either it's a, uh, a designer name, a designer label, or country of origin. Those are the two uh, you know, most important things, really. Marketing elements. Exactly. Um, They're really both brands. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's like a brand. So, uh, so we said, you know, well, well, hell, why isn't anybody doing that? So we started asking some questions and, and looking into it, and people said, oh, well, because it can't be done here. Uh, nobody has made eyewear here in the U.S. since late 70s, early 80s. Um, there's no skilled workforce. Uh, it's too expensive, too hard to get raw materials, blah, blah, blah. Um, so to us, that was like a challenge. 
Uh, people saying it couldn't be done. We're like, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see about that. So that 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 idea was kind of on the on the back shelf. So as Jason said, we were our own sales force. So we kind of, you know, we're, we're trying to build our brands, but but in the background, always had this idea um, or this desire to to produce our own product. That way we can control and manage uh, um, our quality and our inventory. Uh, so eventually, that's what we did. We uh, set out to figure out how to design and manufacture eyewear. Um, or manufacture eyewear, and that was uh, by traveling the world. We went to um, several different countries, touring factories, looking at different processes, uh, figuring out uh, who, t taking the, the best from, from each different type of process and trying to kind of uh, combine those to, to come up with our own unique process that would work here in the U.S., work efficiently, uh, and produce a, a really high quality product. Um, that process took um, at least a year of just kind of researching the idea uh, and then um, once we said okay this can be done and we can do it well <clears throat> then we uh, said okay we, now we got to find the equipment uh, which was a whole nother process we spent several months again traveling um, to different parts of the world looking for the right equipment and um, you know not a lot of people want to help you when you're trying to produce eyewear in another country. Uh, you know, certainly not with to compete up against them. Exactly. Yeah. The, the manufacturers want to sell you the equipment, but they don't want to teach you training on it, <laughs> tell you how to use it. Or right, You're right. So all all raw materials, all the equipment, all that has to be imported from outside the state. I mean, there is nothing domestically for the for the manufacturing of eyewear. <clears throat> so uh, sourcing the equipment sourcing uh, the, the raw materials, sourcing the tooling, all those things is you know a, a huge undertaking. So um, that took, uh, again, several months, uh, but, but we were able to uh, uh, find the equipment that, that matched the process that, that we felt was unique to, to us and, and to the US, uh, a, a process that was gonna work here. Uh, and, and then uh, got, equipment, got the equipment and brought it in. Um, and to, to Jason's point, when you get that equipment and you you bring it in, you open the crate. It's just a machine in a box. There's uh, and you can't just plug it in. Yeah, there's no the power is different. Everything. Yes. Yeah. There's no owner's manual. There's no instructions. There's, there's nobody no, wants to help you. Yeah, right. I mean, you, you can't just call somebody on the phone and uh, and, and ask them, you know, hey, how do you do this? It, it, you just have to figure it out. So. Um, and, and before it's you kind of like it, Ikea furniture. <laughs> it's very similar. <laughs> very much to Ikea, but except for there's no instructions with the cool little dude yeah. showing yeah. you each step. They don't come with the outer wrenches either. Uh, yeah. That's too bad. So, All right, wait, we got a couple questions for you guys. So, um, the, uh, Daily Optician Tim wants to know, uh, what's the best part, uh, the best and most difficult part of working together? Uh, he's the most difficult part, uh, <laughs> and the best. And you're the best part. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have that background. Uh, I, I don't think really there's much that's difficult about it. I mean, we've been you know, cousins obviously all of our lives, but best friends for you know, since he was in high school. You're the Jason's quite older than I. Yeah, I've heard that. that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Clearly. Um, and uh, we've always wanted to do something together, whether it you know, be uh, start our own company or purchase a company. We just always had the desire to, to do something together. Uh, when this when this came along, it was a perfect opportunity, and uh, you know we we think a lot alike, we act a lot alike. Um, Unfortunately, we dress a lot alike. Yeah. Lot so alike. This, so for the, this is a rarity. Yeah. yeah. So uh, hold on. Wait. For you don't know uh, Mark and Jason, which is most of you don't, um, they drive the exact same car. But they didn't just they didn't just drive the exact same car. They went to the to buy cars separately and then came home with the exact same car in the exact same color, right? Yeah. Make model exactly the same. True story. They show up all these to all these places always with the two same cars. We always know if they're there or not <laughs> when we pull up. Um, they also order the same food at every <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> like it's, it's weird. It's nice. Something running late and then long story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 People look at us a little weird when. Uh, you know, one of us is ordering, and uh, you know, he'll just like look at me, like you know, you want obviously you want the same thing, and he'll just order for me, or I'll just order for him. Or if he forgets to say no tomatoes, then I'll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. by the way, he doesn't want to. Yeah. 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 Do you ever do this? Because like uh, married couples do this a lot. Like, um, you know, that's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're gonna like that. Is it? You, I've never yeah, seen absolutely. you do that. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Um, so 
uh, sort of uh, two related questions. Uh, the local pigeon wants to know, do you expect others uh, to follow your lead in terms of um, you know, manufacturing frames in the United States? I would say uh, certainly, um, you know, it, it's, it's a matter of time before other people, there are other people currently doing it. No one's doing it on the scale uh, that we are. Um, and uh, so, so yes, people will, will eventually get in uh, to manufacturing here in the US, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's very difficult and uh, it takes a, a lot of commitment and um, a huge investment of time. Um, so, but yes. It, uh, and I would say we, we welcome it. I mean, we, yeah. we'd love to have more people manufacturing eyewear in the US. We don't expect to be or want to be the only ones I th yeah, I think that um, that's an important note because we've talked about this before. Um, you know, if we're successful, then we'll be able to expand uh, our facility, hire more people when we're successful. <laughs> Sorry, Jason. Um, and, and hopefully others will follow because creating that community of American makers when it comes to eyewear, something that maybe existed 30 years ago, you know, is part of why we're doing this, right? I mean, like, um, it's not just because we think we can we can sell American made frames and we want to put made in the USA on there But but we want to sort of help revitalize that respark it and in order for that to happen it, It's got to be more than just us mm -hmm. uh, You know right now we are going to we are importing all of our acetate uh, From overseas and we are importing all the hinges uh, mostly from Italy and uh, the uh, most of the acetates coming from Italy and the hinges are coming from Germany, but you know, maybe someday Matsukali would open uh, a factory in the U.S. just like they have a factory in China. I mean, that's many years off, but if that were ever to happen, it would happen because there are a lot of guys like us making frames in the United States. And, uh, um, you know, just like there are a lot of people making frames in China, that's why they have a factory in China, because there's an, that's where the frames are being made. The yeah, right. Um, and same thing with hinges. You know, uh, maybe someday there'll be... Uh, so it, it requires that whole network, you know, yeah, and if we wanted to start making acetate here today, we would be very, very challenged that we don't have the resources to do it. But if that whole network and community um, existed, maybe we could we could do that. Back to you guys. So um, another question, uh, do you feel this is a model that other industries could emulate? Uh, certainly. And I think other other industries are. Uh, there's examples of, uh, of other companies. Uh, bringing manufacturing back to the U.S., uh, manufacturing that either wasn't here at all or was was scarce um, and was was is big in Europe or whatever, uh, they are bringing it back uh, and manufacturing high-end precision products here in the U.S. Um, so I think that's going to continue to happen, and I and I think it's I think it's awesome. It's it's very exciting. Yeah, I think we'll see a lot more of it happening throughout many different industries, not just eyewear. Yeah, it, it feels like there's a, we know that it's already happening. I mean, I think eyewear is maybe even a little bit behind um, apparel and, and, and some other uh, accessories. But um, I think like it's, there's a convergence of a lot of things happening at the same time. Right? First of all, doing business overseas, particularly in Asia, is not <clears throat> quite as easy as it was 10 years ago. There are more challenges now. Um, and the market, the Americans seem to be more interested in um, and where their product comes from. They, they care more about the craft of it. They care more about the, maybe the faces behind and the hands that actually make it. And so doing that domestically, or lo even better locally, um, me seems to mean more to, to Americans than it did 15 years ago. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, ever since 2000, uh, 2008, that there's really been a big, uh, a big surge in, in uh, a demand for wanting product made here in the US. So this is a great question from the local pigeon. What qualifications are required to get a job at your factory, and where can we send in a resume? <laughs> so he didn't add. He didn't add that last part, but you, maybe you want to include that. Um, yeah, you know, we, we really look for uh, for for artisans, uh, craftsmen, not necessarily someone that has prior factory experience. Uh, obviously, no one will have optimal manufacturing manufacturing experience, um, but we're not necessarily looking for someone that's in the, you know, has been in the manufacturing industry prior, but someone who maybe even just has hobbies that are, uh, you know, uh, woodworking or someone that, that works with their hands has a great attention to detail. Um, you know, we have a number of uh, very talented people in the factory right now, and uh, 
very few of them have ever been manufactured before, so they do a phenomenal job of eyewear. Uh, and you know, in in a few minutes, we're going to go down to the factory and uh, meet a few of the of the other people that are actually down there making frames right now. Um, but I I think you know, and this this is not just true in our industry, but when we talk about American manufacturing, um, and you guys maybe could speak to this in more detail. But like you know, um, we're doing the, this process that Mark and Jason are have basically reinvented, which is. Uh, manufacturing acetate eyewear in the United States. It's very different than the way acetate eyewear was manufactured 30 years ago. And I think just um, generally speaking, factory jobs in the U.S. today um, are very, very different than they were when I was growing up. The, the people that you're hiring are not, um, you know, they're skilled laborers. They're not just people who have a job every day pushing a button, the same button over and over and over again, pulling a lever. Um, you know, you guys are looking for specific a specific type of person and then we're talking about like six months of training that goes into um, a worker before they're really up to speed right mm -hmm. so so maybe you could talk a little bit about like that training process and and uh, and how people get to that point um, well we uh, everyone we bring in you know I would say one of the, the prerequisites obviously you know uh, to Jason's point they have to be artisans craftsmen um, people that have uh, some some skill to be able to uh, make things with their hands but more importantly they have to really be passionate about what we're doing they have to care uh, and you know I have three rules uh, in in this factory and and caring is is number one I mean caring, is on time one of them uh, on time is actually I wasn't gonna bore you with the list come on we got another uh, rules people, are, people want to work here yeah okay here's the list yeah. be on time don't be late uh, <laughs> care about what you're doing, uh, care about what your coworker is doing, because each step in this process is so incredibly important. Um, come from the raw material, the slab raw material, um, cutting it down into the, into the small slabs, if, if that step isn't done perfectly, then 35 steps down the, the process, uh, any imperfection in step one will impact step 35. Uh, so every single step has to be done perfectly. Uh, so you really have to care about what you're doing and what your coworker is going to be doing in, in the next step. Because if you don't do your job correctly, uh, then then he can't do his, and, and it uh, it really has a ripple effect through the entire production. Uh, so caring is 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 very very important. Um, Rule number three: Have fun. <laughs> rule number three is not have fun, but, but for the purposes of this, we'll say yes. It's have fun. Wait, no, come on. What's rule number three? Uh, uh, Work with a sense of urgency. Move with a sense I think of urgency. Just that up. Uh, <laughs> no, it used to be only two. Words. <laughs> no, no, that that is that is actually the third one. Um, you know, just uh, be enthusiastic about what you're doing and uh, move like you have a purpose. I so. I thought it was funny because when you. Uh, uh, you guys moved here from California about a year ago, yeah. and uh, and I remember when we, when you were in the hiring process, you were you were like, man, people in Chicago are so slow. <laughs> <laughs> no, no doing. Yeah, and I'm like, well, you guys came from California. What are you talking about? I thought everybody's just kind of like hanging out. No, it is night and day. I mean, even driving, even yeah. driving here. I mean, everyone does the speed limit. Everyone's very courteous and let you pull in in front of them. I mean, that doesn't happen if you're trying to get to the front of the pack in California. I thought every maybe you guys are in the wrong part of California. I thought everybody's <laughs> just like relaxing, like they're all you know smoking dope. Yeah. Needless to say, there's a lot of people in Illinois that are looking out for two white Toyotas coming. <laughs> Yeah. Very good. All right, some more questions. Uh, uh, these are also related questions. Um, are industry magazines picking up the narrative on your innovation, and um, are you speaking to business schools? Um, so you can at least start. I mean, uh, I don't know if the the answer to that is. Well, I, um, I, yes, industry magazines are starting to you know pick up on what we're doing. There was uh, a lot of buzz right before. Um, Europa and us joined forces, uh, and now there there has been you know really this this surge of of, of interest and, and buzz about what we're doing, um, and as far as uh, uh, talking to business schools, we haven't gone and, and um, uh, talked to business schools, but we are um, uh, looking at business schools and trade schools, looking for recruiting from recruiting uh, for for skilled work and people that that you know this kind of 
new uh, generation of, of you know, quote unquote, factory worker or, or uh, skilled labor. Um, so it's, uh, you know, you're not gonna find um, uh, that, that right person necessarily on Monster or on LinkedIn. You know, we wanna go to the source where, where these uh, young people are, are coming out of these trade schools excited about working with their hands and being in an industry. Yeah. And being able to train them from the ground up where they've had no prior experience in really any sort of occupation other than you know, while they're attending school. Is, is great for us. Yeah, and for the record, you guys are available for commencement speeches at universities <laughs> across the country, right? Yeah, okay. so on the weekends. Very motivational. <laughs> yeah, right, during the week, we got frames yeah. to make. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, let's, uh, let's take a minute to just give a, a short tour uh, around. And, and for those of you guys who don't know, um, Europa's main headquarters is about five miles south of here um, uh, currently. But we are, we've just, uh, we are in the process of moving to this brand new facility. It's about twice the size of our former facility. That's going to house the IEM factory that uh, Mark and Jason are uh, president and vice president of. And it's also going to house all of our distribution for Europa um, and, our, uh, and our administrative team as well, as well as our creative team. You know, our, our entire headquarters will be here. So this, uh, what you're seeing here is uh, Mark and Jason's office. This is very illustrious. Uh, it's pointing this way right now. Oh no, yeah, it's pointing towards me. Um, we won't we won't bore you guys by making you too dizzy. But this is their view, so that they can always be watching what's happening. And uh, you can enforce the three rules. Yeah, right. <laughs> that guy's not working with a sense of urgency. <laughs> Does Carl look like he's carrying stuff? Yeah, Carl, Carl looks like he cares. Right. So you can see um, all the handwork is being done right now. And uh, let's go downstairs. We can actually uh, meet some of these guys and, and, and talk about... Can, uh, if you want to meet Austin. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's meet Austin. Austin's actually... Another Californian? Yep. Austin, another guy who uh, displaced his whole life to come here to all Chicago. Right. Austin, say hello to the entire optical world. Hello, entire optical world. So Austin... Um, is uh, what, how old you just had a birthday? You're like 20. I turned 23 on Sunday. July All right, 3rd. and so Austin, tell uh, the world a little bit about uh, how you learned to uh, to make eyewear. Um, I uh, I started working with Mark and Jason three four years ago when they first started, and uh, I just learned I learned from sitting down and and figuring out how to do it. That's all. No, come on! Didn't you uh, also make a trip overseas? Yeah, I went to uh, China. Uh, to learn, you know, the hand process, and then Italy, we went to uh, learn a little bit more of the machining, and then China again to learn more machining. How was the uh, food at the cafeterias in the Chinese? I, I lost uh, 15 pounds the first time I went, <laughs> eating rice every day. Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> Fish heads, the worst, the worst food. I don't know how they survive. Nice. All right. Well. But you came back a lot smarter and thinner. That's right. Kind of yeah. 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 yeah, and we've got another trip scheduled for you in like two months. So. Oh no! No, we, we, we no more trips. Now, now we're back here. All right. Um, yeah. So Austin and Austin really is responsible uh, in many ways for running the floor of the factory. Would you guys say that's correct? Yeah. Um, at, at his ripe age of 23, he's already uh, an indispensable part of our process, um, and he runs. He is like the true brains behind the most important machine in our entire uh, factory, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, all, the, all the programming and uh, yeah. I thought we agreed we weren't gonna say that out loud in front of him though. <laughs> no, I, right. I, well, we're just flattering him because there's people <laughs> listening right now. <laughs> all right, we're, we're gonna, we'll, we'll meet that machine um, in just a few minutes. This, uh, I'll show you really quickly, this is just a conference room so that uh, you know, we can show off our latest designs. Oh yeah, actually, so this table uh, was made by Mark and Jason, which is really amazing. And the credenza. And the credenza, of course. We had one important meeting here, so yeah. we, had some, we had to make some furniture. The, uh, the lighting fixture is by, uh, by Mark's wife. Aaron right. built it. Sarah Ali. Oh, very cool, okay. All right, so we're gonna head down uh, real quickly. I hope you guys don't mind this cinema verite that we're doing here. Um, so this is the IEM factory, and uh, I'll let you take you back up here so you can get a better view. Um, about 50 total pieces of equipment, over 50 pieces of uh, equipment, 
35 brand new pieces of equipment. So um, uh, uh, we as a team took you know 15 existing pieces from uh, the factory in Ventura, and then these guys had to go back overseas to source another 35 brand new pieces of equipment um, just over the last year. Uh, and, if, and as Mark suggested, not an easy task to get all these things hooked up and ready to go. You can see our backwards logo. Yeah, you know, logo. <laughs> um, how's it going, John? <laughs> so yeah, nobody. These people. We're, we're not used to being on camera around here. This is our. This is our first interview. Everybody, say hi to the Daily Optician. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 So, so Mark, can you give a little description as to what everybody's doing right now? Absolutely. Now, I'd just like to point out that one of the three rules isn't that everyone is just choosing not to talk right now. Well, because, because they know there's filming going on. <laughs> um, so, you know, we have this, uh, the most advanced, techno technologically advanced factory uh, in the Western Hemisphere for producing acetate frames. But even with all that technology and all this equipment, more than half of this process still has to be done by hand. Uh, and this is one of those really important processes. Uh, after all the machining is done, uh, we have to come in here and hand scrape every single frame. Uh, so to give an example, if you're producing 3,000 frames, that's 3,000 frame fronts and 6,000 temples. That's 9,000 individual components that have to be hand scraped uh, before it can go on to the next, next process. So, uh, so what they make sure is that there's no imperfections uh, whatsoever in the uh, uh, in the machining. A any tool marks, any um, uh, uh, file issues, file marks, all that stuff has to be hand scraped and smoothed out before it can go on to the next step. Uh, cool. So uh, not everybody doing the same thing, though. So I see everybody's using different tools. Yeah, there's there's several different tools that we use um, that we've developed or not we've developed, uh, <laughs> we've found uh, work best over the years, uh, and uh, and our, our scraping tools have evolved uh, from the beginning, uh, where we used to use uh, sharpened hacksaw blades uh, that we that we would cut in house uh, in order to to, uh, to deeper scrape the, the frames. So. As with everything, you know, we evolve over time. So, all right, guys, thank you. You can go back to living your normal lives and uh, talking again. Sorry, we didn't. Vitaly didn't have anything to say. But but uh, so this is Vitaly. <laughs> How are you, Vitaly? Uh, say hello to the uh, Daily Optician and all the optical world. How are you guys? Yeah, I know. I know. So, uh, how do you like working at the IEM factory so far? It's absolutely amazing. It's it, the product itself and creating this is just like it's art. So it's something each one you would have to make, and I think it's it's beautiful what comes out in that. So tell me uh, a little bit about your history. What did you do before you uh, started working here? Uh, what I did was I did manufacturing. I also did quality control and. Uh, did a little uh, of uh, CNC operations, so uh, kind of making and producing items, make sure the quality, the measurements, and everything was correct. And uh, so, it's very important to me about quality and making sure everything is perfect. Cool. So, continuous stuff like that. So, all right, nice to meet you, Vitaly. Making thanks. me a little nervous. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Just like your motorcycle. Everybody, th thanks again for uh, for letting us peek in. All right. All right. All right, so uh, Vitaly mentioned CNC, and uh, we've got a number of CNC machines here in the uh, in the factory. We've shut down all the equipment for now so that you can actually hear us. Otherwise, uh, it would be very, very loud in here. So everybody's doing hand work right now. We're back here with Austin, um, and I mentioned that Austin is the uh, is the brains behind our, our biggest and most uh, important machine. This is the Monofast CMS machine. So this is a very, very expensive uh, and very, very uh, technologically en enhanced version of a CNC machine. Um, you, who wants to talk about the CNC machine, uh, the CMS? Mark, uh, I'll throw it to you. Okay, so uh, a couple things are unique about this machine. Um, number one, this is the only one that exists on, on this side of the globe. Uh, and number two, uh, prior to uh, moving to a CNC-based production, 
we were doing everything by hand. Um, so that means it would take us, it would take two guys five days to produce what this machine can produce in eight hours. Uh, so a, a huge advantage as far as efficiency uh, and uh, quality. There's no, you, you all but eliminate any human error issues um, or inconsistency in, in, the, in the machine. Um, this machine can, uh, uh, it's a five axis machine, so it can cut just about any angle that we program into it. Uh, the capabilities are, uh, are, are phenomenal and, and uh, um, because it's a, a two head, you can see here, there's, there's two cutting heads. There's one below and one above. Uh, and that is to maximize efficiency. While one head is cutting, the other one can be switching the tool and uh, grabbing the next tool for the next cut. Cool. So to give you an example, this is basically the, the stage it is before it goes into the CMS. And here's the rough cut when it comes out about four minutes later. All right, cool. All right, so maybe next time if we do another one of these soon, uh, we'll actually walk through the factory and, and uh, machine as it's working but right now let's go back up to the office I know we got a lot of questions uh, from some of the people who are watching here we'll address those questions um, but uh, one thing I want to mention you know this was sort of a um, half of a, a tour through the factory but one thing that's really important to us and one of the reasons uh, that we wanted to do this to begin with is because uh, we really want opticians and optometrists from all over the country to be able to come here and see what goes into making a pair of eyeglass frames. You know, we, we talk a lot about the fact that, um, you know, we have a problem in our industry because opticians, the people whose real responsibility it is to um, communicate to patients um, the value of a pair of eyeglass frames, uh, you know, opticians in the United States, so few of them have ever seen a frame being made. So how can we, um, how can we claim to be experts on something that, we, that, that we've never seen being made? So um, we're going to have a, a link on our website and we're going to ask our uh, sales reps all over the country to make sure that that invitation is clear to opticians all over the country. And wherever you are, um, you're going to be welcome to come visit our factory and, and we'll walk you through the process so that you can see you know, all of those 35 plus steps that go into making an acetate pair of frames and then hopefully when a patient comes in and asks you, you know, why are eyeglasses so expensive, which I think opticians hear all the time, um, you know, you'll, you'll have a real answer uh, and you can hopefully communicate some of those specific experiences that you had when you were here in the factory. Uh, you know, lens companies do it all the time. Um, uh, labs do it all the time. They invite people in to, to see how things are made, but uh, the opportunity has never existed in frames before or at least it, it hasn't for a long time. We want to be very, very transparent and allow as many people as possible to come in and, and, and see our process. Okay, cool. So, uh, some questions. Uh, by the way, people love your team. The local pigeons says love your team. They, they, we, have, we do have a great team. Um, I'm gonna try and start from the beginning here. Uh, sorry about this. Yeah, we are hiring. We are always hiring. Yeah, about the resumes. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the local pigeon asks, can your frames be purchased worldwide? Um, I'm, I'm going to take that real quickly. They will eventually be able to uh, be available worldwide. They are not, uh, the, the frames that are um, produced in this factory are going to be uh, all, of, it's going to be one brand new collection that will be all 100% American made um, and that will be launched at Vision Expo West in September. Um, so they are not available just yet. Uh, also, the question to, uh, but you guys might have something to contribute to this, uh, does American Made translate to premium pricing? Um, and I would say um, our product is gonna be a luxury good, for sure, so uh, um, I, I don't wanna get into the exact pricing yet as the product's not gonna be released until September, but it will certainly be more expensive than uh, a lot of the product that we bring in from Asia. Uh, that being said, I think it's important to note, and you guys can certainly touch on this more, that the product is not more expensive simply because it's made in, in the United States. We knew from the very beginning that that, that wasn't going to work. We weren't going to ask people to spend more money on a product just because it was made in the U.S. Uh, we needed to make it better um, than anybody else in the world. And so, uh, you know, you, you got a little uh, uh, peek into 
um, the process of hiring the right people, training the right people, making sure we have real craftsmen that know how to, uh, to, to create a frame, um, but also the investment that we put into technology. And we, um, you know, we put that investment in in order to offset the cost uh, uh, of our labor. Obviously, it costs more um, for, for our labor than it does for uh, labor overseas, or at least in Asia, but we're, you know, we're using less people and those are, we're using skilled craftsmen as opposed to just uh, random people that you know, move in and out of the factory. We expect these people uh, to be here for a very, very long time. And, and I think uh, so far they, they seem like they wanna be here for a long time too. Can you guys uh, touch on a little bit, uh, you know, how, how maybe we're counteracting some of the, uh, the cost of that labor and or you know, what makes our process unique and, uh, and justifies a, a luxury cost? Well, and first off, I think really what you're gonna be paying for is, is the quality, not the fact that it's made in the USA, the fact that we use the best materials, the best uh, hardware that we can find you know, that's in the industry, and, uh, and the quality will be, will be top notch. I mean, I think that's where the value is. Yes, the fact that it's made in the USA is, is awesome. We love it, obviously, but uh, you know, that's not going to make it, the price tag any, any higher. Yeah, comparing apples to apples, you know, a, a product of equal quality uh, to what we're producing here, which most likely will be coming out of European factories, um, is is no more expensive than what we're producing. So, uh, dollar for dollar, we are on par with any high-end um, optical factory. Um, we are not more expensive because we're made here in the USA. We are made. We are going to be more expensive because. Like Jason said, and like Scott said, uh, because we're we're providing a better product using better raw materials. Um, how we're able to do that is through efficiency um, and by uh, using um, the latest technology um, and equipment that uh, allows for less handwork. Not doesn't eliminate it, but allows for less handwork and produces a higher volume of product uh, in, a, in a shorter amount of time. All right, cool. So. Um... Not sure if, uh, if anybody else has any questions. I think that we've pretty much, oh, how do you roll this out to opticians and how do they pass on this value? That could be read uh, two different ways. It could be, how do they pass on this value or how do they, <laughs> they pass on this they value? They're smart, they don't pass on it. Yeah, um, so I think uh, the, the local pigeons question, uh, how, do, uh, how do you roll this out to opticians? How do they pass on this value? I think um, the answer, is uh, we at Europa have always uh, been very, very active um, with our participation with opticians groups, whether they be on a state or national level. It's one of the reasons why we have such a close high volume of, uh, of people regularly um, to walk through our factories. As part of our uh, sponsorship of the Opticians Association of America, we already um, have arranged for the state leaders of every opticians association across the country to come here. We're, we're actually paying for their trip um, so that they can uh, sort of be the first to see the factory as they walk through it and then hopefully go back to their states and, uh, and be able to share some of that knowledge because so much of it is just about education and knowledge. Uh, anything else that you guys want? Yeah, no. Um, I, I think you covered it, Jay. Yeah, no, thank you. So how might Daily Optician and others support you through your journey? Yeah, just uh, helping us spread the word, you know, helping us get the, the, you know, the, uh, our message out. And um... I would say encouraging, uh, you know, encouraging op opticians to take advantage of coming in and touring the factory. Um, you know, not only for their customers, you know, to educate the customer, but, but just for their own personal knowledge to, to understand, I mean, uh, to understand how a product that you sell is made is such a valuable, powerful tool. Uh, and once you see it, it will, uh, I, I, would, uh, I would bet that it would reignite your passion for the industry. I mean, once you see it, uh, you're, you're really blown away by what it takes to make a, a pair of frames. Um, and I think it's uh, so valuable. Um, to, to, to see it firsthand. Yeah, we, we had our, uh, yeah, the Europa sales force was here just two weeks ago and they got a chance to walk through the first time. And I think um, you guys could see it in their eyes. I mean, these people, many of them were uh, former opticians before they uh, sort of had, you know, before they headed out on the road. And uh, they were so geeked. Like, you know, I mean, it's exciting to me, but you know, I'm, I'm 36 years old. Some of these guys are, uh, and women are, are in their 50s, 60s. They've worked in the optical industry their whole lives. They've never seen a frame being made. And they were 
so excited. And I think for us, that's, you know, again, that's such a huge part of why we've put the time, effort and dollars into this project so that, um, you know, we can help share that process. And I think it's in our small way, you know, we're, we know we're still small players in this industry, uh, but in our small way, if we can help affect that kind of change and make that difference throughout the entire industry, um, then, uh, then yeah, we're going to be, uh, we'll be really happy. So to answer your question, how you, how you can help come see it and tell others about it because uh, it's a, it, it's an open invitation. We will ask that you make an appointment and that don't just like knock on our door one day. <laughs> uh, but the, the facility is definitely set up um, to have visitors and to, and to show, uh, to show people what goes into it. We'll also have videos uh, and other opportunities to sort of um, subtly, you know, give, give an idea as to what goes on here. But, um, but that, 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 that's a huge uh, a part of the excitement for us. So if there are no more questions, I think we'll probably uh, shut it down for now. Um, you guys uh, want to uh, any parting words or just say goodbye to the optical community? Uh, thank you guys for tuning in to our very first uh, uh, Meerkat, Meerkat uh, streaming video here. There's definitely going to be more and uh, we'll have there will be some exciting stuff to come, certainly. Uh, but thank you again for, uh, for tuning in. Yeah, we appreciate the opportunity and hopefully we get to meet all of you in person. When you come visit, remember the three here. Don't be late and uh, move with a sense of urgency. Yeah. No sense. That's true, even if you're touring the <laughs> factory. Right. That's not just to work here. That's right. um, yeah, I just want to say, uh, you know, thank you to Tim and the and the whole team at uh, at Daily Optician for giving us this opportunity. Um, I hope that uh, we did a decent job. This is our first Meerkat, um, <laughs> and so you know maybe it was a little literally a little shaky, but uh, but we appreciate the opportunity and. Um, um, I, I'm available by email anytime, so if anybody else there, out there wants to uh, shoot me an email, it's uh, sshapiro at europaeye.com, um, or you can find me on Twitter and Facebook. These guys, you guys are available on social media, is that correct? <laughs> we like to keep a low profile, yeah. uh, you know, signing autographs and doing all that. Can you, can, can you throw them some kind of contact info in case they uh, have any questions? Or uh... no, I'm actually on Facebook as of recent. Yeah. Uh, thanks for trying to keep that on the PL. <laughs> I didn't realize it. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> on I Facebook? I your books about this this morning. Oh, you did? Thanks. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, email address is js at iem hyphen usa.com. And awesome. uh, I am uh, mf at iem hyphen usa.com. And no, that's, that's nothing, my nothing, initials. Nothing funny about that. Yeah, no, those are my initials. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, thanks again, and uh, we'll talk to you again next time.